Hey everybody, welcome back. Stagger here. In today's numismatic news and information for the 16th day of April 2023, I'm going to take you over to Jam Boyden so I can show you where those spot prices ended the week. However, before that, huge shout out to all of our channel members. Really appreciate all y'all. Thank you very much. Now, over here to Jam Boyden, gold ended the week down 29.11 to 2017.17, silver down 47 cents to 25.62, platinum down 585 to 1060.34, palladium was flat on friday at 15 58 17 but check it out we're still above 1500 dollars for palladium still above a thousand for platinum above 25 for silver and still above that 2000 mark for gold so i think these are pretty hanging and pretty tough now what's interesting is you can see that all of these items are still available here at jm bullion and what are the what is the uh premiums well look at that 49.59 we're actually below 50 dollars right now we were above 50 dollars on thursday and friday last week um, will we see $50 for this upcoming week? Well, we'll find out, won't we? Because we'd like to pay attention to what's happening. And where we at with that premium right now? We're at $23.97 for the premium. And here, check this out. This is a kind of a big deal. I found this this morning. It says uh, from JM Bullion, and it says, how are premiums calculated? And this is for normal times, uh, because we are not living in normal times, folks. And, and, and that isn't my opinion. That's from JM Bullion, because check this out. It says JM Bullion presents... How are silver and gold bullion premiums calculated? Seems pretty straightforward. The price paid for each ounce of bullion is composed of the metal spot price and the bullion premium. Okay, metal spot price and the bullion premium. Average price composition of common bullion. So they got here American Silver Eagle, looks like a Canadian Maple Leaf, and a Gold Eagle. All right. So they're telling us that the premium on this is 20% with an 80% spot. That's in normal times, I would imagine. 16% premium on the Maple Leaf, 84% spot, 4% premium, 96% spot. As you can see here, folks, that's 100, that's 100, and that's 100, right? That's 100% of the price. Now, how are these bullion premiums determined? Well, it shows you right here. And this breaks it down to what we're going to be seeing here in this video, all right? What's the difference between premium and spot? Well, spot is the current price per ounce exchanged on global commodity markets. There's a silver ask for spot. Now, this is the bullion premium, and there are five here bullet points that they're going to be talking about. The additional price charged for a bullion product over its current spot price. That's what the premium is. The calculation for bullion premium depends on five key factors, folks. They are not lying here. The current bullion market supply and demand factors, okay, that's the first and foremost listed, right? The volume of bullion offered or bid upon, the bullion seller's objectives, the type of bullion products being sold, right? Local, national, and global economic conditions, all right? Can you um, can you actually say, okay, I know what this means, I know what this means, and, and put in an actual uh, scenario where that is happening, this is happening, and this is, you know what I'm saying? All right, I hope so. <laughs> Bullion supply and demand. The total amount of supply and demand of bullion is major influence on bullion product premiums. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably where we go here to the United States Mint and look at the bullion sales. It says sales totals by month are updated every weekday by 5 p.m. Eastern time. Now, we know that the bullion dealer, especially it was JM Bullion, picked up a large supply of American Silver Eagles on April 12th. Well, here we are on April 16th, and there's no new tale to tell whatsoever from the bullion uh, at the United States Mint sales, right? So there's that to consider. Let's keep on keeping on here about the bullion supply and demand. All right, now it says here, fluctuations in the gold and silver markets affect bullion market supply, and this impacts premium prices. For example, in the Western Hemisphere, during summer, calmer price patterns mean the bullion supply tends to increase. It looks like summer prices go down. Sellers mark their prices to attract market share. It says here during the colder months, the, during the other months, right, other, other than summer, silver and gold prices tend to have more volatility. This leads to increased buying and selling, and bullion sellers react accordingly. Some may mark up prices to prevent running out of inventory or to capture profits. See, I think that's what it is, folks. A large, large part of this is marking up prices to prevent running out of inventory. All right, now check this out. Bullion dealers are businesses. Okay, that's, yeah, absolutely. And they're actively trying to balance product inventory and profitability. Too much inventory equals higher costs, right? Just sitting around doing nothing, all that money spent. Too little inventory equals angry customers. So it's a balancing act, no doubt about it. Now, economic conditions. See, so we talked about bullion supply and demand. That was the first bullet point here. We're going to go to volume and then bullion sellers' objectives, type of bullion, and local national. Folks, this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. Economic conditions. Depending on their size and significance, market events can affect bullion premiums on either local or global levels. Now, what we saw when the beginning of this silver squeeze started in early March 
was the uh looks like the svb bank could have started this pr uh, current rush on premium metals that we're seeing right now right so that's an economic condition it says here in a small town with only one brick and mortar coin shop the dealer may boost their premiums to guard against running out of inventory in a country like venezuela where the local currency is losing value at extreme rate they could have put in this country too or any country that's facing uh, inflation um, at extreme rate locals may opt to buy bullion to preserve their wealth this means higher premiums so, okay yeah right swap out venezuela for anywhere that has higher inflation at a global level in the event of a large crisis similar to 2008 financial crisis it is likely premiums would increase significantly as demand spikes and supplies diminish yeah one two three uh, well at least these two seem like they're happening right now now here we go volumes being sold this is a big deal folks right here volumes being sold this is actually going to be tying into the rest of the story that we're going to be telling you here today every seller incurs cost on each transaction such as time overhead or payment processing costs right those credit card machines are not free uh, for a seller a single transaction for one ounce of gold may have similar transaction costs as a thousand ounce transaction so which one do you think you're going to make more money on right which one has a higher percentage of cost the one ounce of gold or the thousand ounces yeah that's easy therefore transactions with higher volumes of bullion have their costs spread out as a result premiums tend to be higher on small volume purchases there's premiums and they go down the larger the volume gets right as a result premiums tend to be higher on small volume purchases and lower on high volume buys now this is huge remember this all right for the rest of the day or the rest of the world i don't even know now since your form of bullion for sale this is a big deal too now as a general rule the larger the piece of bullion is the less the premium costs are per ounce this is huge it costs a bit far less to make one 100 ounce 100 ounce silver bar versus 100 one ounce rounds right so more money to cost uh, it costs more money to produce 100 of these than it does one of these okay that's pretty simple there's also typically a significant difference in premiums between government and private mint bullion products absolutely folks absolutely check this out for example the most popular bullion coins in the world are american silver and gold eagle coins the u.s mint charges a minimum of two dollars per ounce over spot for each silver eagle coin and three percent over spot for each gold eagle coin they strike and sell to the world's bullion dealer network but however a private company like the sunshine minty company is going to sell their silver rounds and bars in bulk for less than half the premium most governments will sell their products for all right here we go bullion sellers objectives whether the seller is a large bullion dealer or a private individual they will almost always want to yield the highest ask price that they can get for the bullion that they're selling that's just buy low sell high right pretty simple that said just because one wants to receive a large premium on the bullion they're selling doesn't necessarily mean the market's demand or willing buyers will comply but right now does that even does that even matter right now or are people just happy to get a hold of it right so dealers must consider these factors when selling setting premiums market share objectives competitor strategies price equilibrium strategy and here we go if a dealer sets the price too high buyers will likely choose to go to a lower price competitor yeah so um are people leaving uh jm bullion when they see 49.59 go oh it's too much money not going to spend it yeah they could be now if a dealer sets their price too low they could end up selling all of their inventory without garnering enough profit margin to pay for the company's overhead costs or to restock and resupply their inventories right that would be just um probably catastrophic now dealers and sellers are both typically buying or trying to find the price equilibrium that's the sweet spot where the time required to complete a sale is minimized and the seller's profit is maximized this is more difficult than it sounds as there can be thousands of factors at play when establishing the best possible premium to charge line when overall's objectives now here we go spot versus premium i think we already kind of did this um, during times of normal bullion demand here's how much spot price and premiums influence the overall prices and some of the most popular bullion products in the world here we go um these are the composition of the world's most popular bullion products american eagle canadian maple leaf rmc sunshine mitt and ashahi asahi uh it's out of japan so there you go 595 694 793 1684 and 2080 and there it is for gold and that is it now check this out this is huge bam right there this is from atmex and this was just yesterday folks this is a big deal this is huge april 15 2023 update from atmex statement on the current market conditions now we've already talked about the april 5 update we've already talked about the april 7 update but look at this one it's three times the size of those other ones here we go april 15 2023 update it's been a little over a week since our last update during that time atmex has added 25 percent more resources 
to our fulfillment area. A significant amount of this is our exempt office workforce now assisting in operations, showing the kind of dedication to customer service that we take great pride in. Um, and really, this is the meat and potatoes right here, folks. We're seeing overall progress in getting down the black backlog, which sits at three days behind our standard best-in-class service commitment. Unfortunately, or more like regrettably, because it's not luck, we are not catching up as fast as we would like and must make some additional difficult decisions. What? Yeah, they're not catching up. It's getting probably more. And look at the things they've done already. And they have to make additional changes. Oh, my goodness. So effective today, that was just yesterday. They're going to go to a $500 order minimum in an effort to slow down order volumes further. I expect this will last 7 to 10 more days in an effort to be more transparent. When we look at order volumes, our average daily orders for the last week for orders over $250 are actually up. Customers are simply migrating to a larger order rather than not placing a purchase. And that is what they wanted. They just wanted you to not place a purchase so they could catch up. Well, that's what they're doing. Could you imagine if you had a business and you're like, yeah, it's just so darn busy. Just come back later. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. How about take a number and have a seat? We appreciate the commitment to our customers to modify while at the same time, we are not getting the relief needed to get back to traditional service levels. With a new minimum and the addition of new hires, I fully expect to be in business normal in the near future. I don't even know what that means. That's so ambiguous. That could be like next year. I don't even know. As I've said in previous updates, our business is all-time highs for a six-week period. Ooh, remember, early March. Our order counts have more than doubled on a weekly basis. We are used to market volatility, but not these kinds of levels. It's great to see the market realize the benefits of precious metals in their portfolio and believe increased demand is here to stay. Atmex is going to continue to make substantial investments in people, processes, and systems to maintain our best in-class reputation. And it isn't just them, folks. Bam, check it out. SD Bullion, same story, business update on Friday. Over the past week, we've continued to address the backlogs of orders. All right, check this out. Um, normal processing times of one to three business days. We expect to reach our goal within the next two weeks. All right, that's the time frame. Therefore, at the beginning of next week, that's probably Monday or today, we'll be able to reduce the order minimum from 500 to 250 to allow us to resume serving as many customers as possible. So one is going up, the other one is going down. Isn't that interesting? And we could see this change again, right? So, wow, we are into, into uh, some really interesting times in the silver world. And what does that make you feel like when the uh, bullion dealers uh, are changing from 500 to 250 or raising them actually to $500, you know, because they're just so inundated with business and so backlogged with getting things going. That is not a, I mean, that's just, that's not something where I think any of us are probably used to hearing and um in addition to that it's it's probably why the american silver eagles and the gold eagles these are at such high premiums right now now off to the plus one bam this is proverbs 13 7 it says here some pretend to be rich and have nothing but others act poor and have great wealth and i think what that means and i think we've all seen it here um and and both types of these people are really not to be followed you know because one is spending what little money they have to pretend to be rich and, you know, soon they're going to be impoverished by that own, like, spending habit, right? Just trying to be flashy or, you know, trying to show off. While the other won't really fulfill their obligation to give to the poor and the needy. That's that's a bummer in the summer right there. Now let's head over here to 3959.99.9. This is the OJs for the love of money. You know the song. It's good stuff. Now, there it is, folks. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you do like what you're going to see, please subscribe to the channel. It's free. Stack her out.